Good afternoon on this beautiful day. Um, I thought today I'd actually talk about communication because that seems to be a, a, a really big area that when I see all my couples um, in my room, um, that seems to be something that they all wish uh, to do better, to uh, learn better skills because ultimately what they're really after is connection. Um, and what happens is they get into these standoff positions and so really what they're really wanting to be able to achieve is to have closeness and connection and to be able to work through the issues that actually come up for them rather than getting into these places where um, they really disconnect. So um, one of the things I really wanted to share with you today was um, John Gottman um, is a researcher and through his research, he's come up with uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse, which basically, if they are in a relationship, they do a lot of destructive things. And so um, what we wanna try and do is help with skills to learn to eliminate those and use antidotes to be able to keep connection rather than disconnect. So um, the first, uh, and, and one thing I really wanna say is that no couple is perfect and every couple is going to have conflict in a relationship. It's how we deal with that conflict, how we work with each other to actually try and maintain that connection. So the four horsemen, which are really important that um, we wanna try and eliminate is criticism, defensiveness, contempt, and stonewalling. And they're the four that we wanna really try and eliminate. And each one has an antidote. And so um, together with my couples, we, we work collaboratively. That's the key, is to actually learn these skills to be able to try and keep that connection. So let's have a look at those individually. So criticism, I think, is a, is a big one. People go in very much with starting conversations with the word you. You do this and you said that, and immediately the other person feels attacked and blamed and judged, and they get their back up. And so what we really wanna try and do is start those conversations differently. So we wanna start with, the, the word I. And when we talk from the I, we actually own it ourselves. So it's our own experience and no one can take that away from us. So when we talk from the I, it would be, you know, I feel really upset when you say you're going to take the bins out and I notice they're still there. What I'd really appreciate is that you actually follow through with what you've said and take the bins out. Do you think that's something you could do? So it's saying, I feel, um, I feel upset, I feel angry, putting out your statement of what you need them to do. So I feel upset when you leave the dishes out on the, on the counter. Um, what I, and then my need is, my need is not what I don't want them to do, but actually what I want them to do, okay? So we talk in what our desire is of our need. So I feel upset when you leave the dishes. What I need is for you to actually wash up before you go to bed, and then the request, is that something you feel you could do? So that's coming across being able to speak what our needs are, but in a way that we own it, and there is no judgment, criticism, or blame, um, and the other person then can hear what it is, but by putting it out as a request, we're also not demanding it, but we're asking for what our need is, and then have that conversation. So instead of bottling it up and then it coming out as an attack, as you say you're always going to do this and you never follow it through, well, usually that's not going to get us very far. We might feel it inside. I think we're all human. We'll all feel like we want to say it, but it's not really very constructive. So what I'm trying to encourage you to do is to be able to say it in a different way that meets your need. And um, and so that is putting it out, first of all, with the I statement, the fact about what it is about that you are asking for, and then putting it out for the request for change. So that's the first one is the um, first, first horseman of criticism. The second one I'd like to go on to 
um, is the defensiveness. Now, defensiveness is a big one because usually we defend when we want to protect ourselves, um, when we're feeling attacked. But when we do that, we literally are putting a wall up between us and the other person and the other person then doesn't feel heard or validated or understood. And so it's not really a great way of the of getting your point across your needs met, but also the other person's needs met as well. So, um, so I think the thing is the key to being defensive is to actually put our reactivity, which isn't easy, but we need to learn to do, is to put our own reactivity to the side and enter the other person's world and be able to try and understand what it is that they're saying to us and take as much as possible a small part of responsibility for where we may have um, been a part of this discussion. So if um, I was late, for instance, and um, my partner says to me, um, you know, I'm really upset that you're late, Instead of going, well, you're always late too, you have, you know, you can't say that to me because you were late last night. Immediately, that just gets into a battleground and that doesn't work. So what I want to be able to go is, yeah, they might have been late last night, but I actually have to look at this interaction right here and now. And that interaction was, yes, I was late. So I, I acknowledge I was late last night and I'm sorry for that. And so when we do that and we take that um, every time we act in that moment, it's like we're doing a repair and we're owning it in that moment and that keeps connection. As soon as we go into the blame game or, or the, um, well, you were late to last night or yesterday, so you, and so it's defending immediately the other person isn't going to hear that very well and you get in then into a fight. So the idea of all these sorts of things is to try and negate those fights, keep connection, but be authentic in being able to come to our partner, express what our needs are and our partner to be able to not defend but actually own the responsibility for the part that they might be. So another example of that might be um, I feel really upset when you talk to me that way. And what I need is you to change your tone. Now, immediately, I need to look at myself and be able to say, well, how did I actually deliver that? Was my tone aggressive? Was my tone not in a way that, was my tone in a way that pushed them away? Rather than actually going, yep, yeah, you're right. So I would own that and I would say, okay, what I'm hearing you say is that you don't like the way I spoke to you, um, my tone, and I can accept that the fact that I was feeling irritable and my tone might have just come out the wrong way. So um, I'm sorry for that. So they're just two like little examples of where we own the little part that we could potentially do differently to um, keep connection in the conversation. Um, the third one, uh, the third horseman, um, which is probably really damaging is the, is contempt. And contempt is really where we, we see the flaws in our partner. We, we are looking for the bad in our partner rather than the good. And it's about, um, putting our partner down and speaking with scorn and in a way that we, I actually would feel superior to them. So it's, and I think we've all probably met somebody like that or even um, been in that position where you're with someone and the way they speak to you, it's much more superior and you just feel put down. Um, and that is probably one of the worst forms of um, damaging. Uh, a relationship um, and I think a lot of people then form just a habit of behaving in that way so um, and they can't see or appreciate the good things that the other person is doing so um, 
So what I've really learnt about um, contemptuous behaviour is there's usually underneath that an unmet need, a dream um, or a need that has not been met. And what usually then happens is they don't know, quite know how to express that or they potentially don't even know what that need is at the time. They just know they don't like what it is that they're hearing from the other person. And so sarcasm is a really good way of, and when people eye roll, uh, you know, like do that and, or they're sarcastic, it's their whole defense mechanism, but it's, it's the, one of the most destructive things. So the antidote for contentment is to actually be able to go, what, let's look at what's underneath that. What is the unmet need that I need to communicate? To my partner. So the antidote for that is again really speaking from the eye. It's putting out how I feel, um, what my needs are and in a way that it's in a request nature that my partner can hear and receive and then again putting it out to my partner as to um, a way that they will receive. Um, and as I say the whole point of all this always is connection. So instead of eye rolling and, and or becoming sarcastic, it's like, I'm feeling really frustrated now. What I'm really needing you to do is to be able to just give me some time. Is this the right time right now um, to speak? Or do we need to set up a time? Because this issue is really important to me. Um, so um, I'm starting to feel like I'm wanting to put you down or... Um, do something destructive to the relationship. So instead, I'm actually going to take a different tact and I'm actually going to speak what my needs are. And for that way, I'm actually owning what it is for me. And if, some, if I'm listening to my partner and I'm not feeling heard, instead of doing the eye roll, you know, it's like when I'm talking to you now, I'm not feeling heard and what I need you to be able to do is to actually, is this a good time for you because I need to set up a time so that what I need to say, is, which is important to me, is going to be heard and validated by you. So I'm putting out a request of what I need but I'm not going into the sarcasm and the eye rolling which is potentially so damaging and all it does is just ends up in a fight. Um, I think also another um, example, because contemptuous behaviour is so bad and so damaging. So an example of that, and I just was writing it down then, is something like, there you go again. You're spending all the money. You're just absolutely reckless. You're absolutely out of control. I've saved money. I've done all the work. And what do you do? You just go out and spend it all. You're just stupid. You're absolutely useless and you, you don't think of anything else but yourself. So that's quite contemptuous and I'd probably put an eye roll in there as well. Um, and all I know is that that is going to be really damaging and I'm not going to get my needs met because my partner is uh, um, or husband, I can guarantee, is going to feel extremely attacked. They're either going to shut down or they're going to defend back. So... The best way of being able to say that is something really in quite a different way, and that's talking from the eye. You know, I feel really frustrated about our finances and the amount that we're spending at the moment versus what we had agreed on that we were going to budget. Um, and so what I'd like to do is be able to sit down with you and talk about the finances again and just reassess that budget to make sure it's realistic for what you need um, to spend for yourself and for the house so that we can be on the same page. And so could we set up a time to make that happen? That's going to be much more a way of keeping connection um, between the two of you um, and being able to get your needs met rather than going in with all guns blazing. The last horseman I wanted to cover today was stonewalling. And stonewalling is when we withdraw from an interaction. And we might be physically present, but we're actually, we're there. We're, sorry, we withdraw. So that can be the crossing of the arms, 
Um, it's the looking away and physically we're there, but we've actually put up a wall emotionally and we're not there at all for our partner. So what usually happens is um, that the pattern really goes something like this, that you feel criticized. And the more then you turn away, the more your partner then attacks again. And then the more you shut down even further, and then because your partner feels that you're not really there, the more they try to get your attention. So this is sort of the dance that actually goes on between you. So the more that you withdraw and 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 aren't emotionally present, the more your partner is trying to reach in and get you. Um, and and then that usually comes out more in a hostile way where you're feeling attacked or blamed or criticised and to protect yourself, you shut yourself down. Um, so then that's then how the pattern plays out. So as we can see, the actual shutting down doesn't work also for your partner to be able to get their point across. So there's the learning how to get the point across, which is what we were talking about before, but it's also what we can do when we're starting to feel flooded. So that's another word as well for it. So our heart rate elevates, um, that starts to quicken quite um, quickly. And the stress levels of cortisol and adrenaline are released as well. And so that's the negative spiral that starts to happen. And when this happens, it's nearly impossible to think clearly. Um, basically, when our emotion goes up, our cognitive switches off. So to try and have a rational conversation when our heart rate is elevated like that and we're becoming very reactive and cortisol and adrenaline are, are there as well. It's nearly, well, it is impossible to have a constructive conversation and to solve the problem um, really in a constructive way. So the antidote for that then is is to really be able to what we call self-soothe ourselves. Self-soothe ourselves is to be able to remove ourselves from the situation for really probably a minimum of 20 minutes to be able to bring that heart rate right back down again and to be able therefore, um, and what we might need to do is to calm ourselves down. There's a really great technique like square breathing. So I would breathe in for four and hold for four, exhale for four and hold for four. So that's why it's the square. And if I do that for a minute and then check in and see how I'm feeling inside, and I might need to do it for 10 minutes to just bring everything back down again, because we need to bring our um, emotions back down again to a level that our heartbeat is less than 100 beats per minute. And then we can actually engage in the conversation with each other. So the antidote really for stonewalling where we're starting to get flooded is to really um, be able to bring that heart rate down, the, the stress levels down through the breath and do some self-soothing exercises. That might also mean going for a swim, it might mean going um, for a walk, it might be cooking. The main thing is that you are not in your head staying re-engaged in the conversation. You're actually focused on trying to actually, on yourself, to try and calm everything down at just at that moment. So it's really important at that moment that when you feel that you are getting um, flooded, that you just don't walk off from your partner, that you actually communicate to your partner that I'm feeling um, overwhelmed at the moment, I'm feeling like I wanna withdraw, um, but I actually, what I want to let you know is that I just need to take some time out from the conversation at the moment and to be able to, um, just calm down enough so we can actually have this conversation in a constructive way so both of us are feeling heard and validated to get both our needs met. And the idea then would be um, to re-engage um, in the conversation and do it in one of the ways talking from the I, which is 
um, owning the experience and delivering it to our partner in a way that they're going to be able to hear it and put it out as a request for change. So when we um, reduce all those four horsemen in a um, communication, um, and when they're speaking um, more positively and showing appreciation and gratitude and respect, the word respect, let's respect our partner. If we approach um, communication in that way and our relationship in that way, we're going to be building more chances of positive connections. And when therefore um, we do that, we're building more positive connection towards each other and less negative interactions, frustration, blame, criticism and judgment. And so these are the sorts of things that when couples come to see me that we really work on um, to, to build because at the end of the day, no couple is perfect. That's really important to know that no couple is perfect. But there is a chance to be able to have and learn these skills to have really a rich, intimate um, connection with your partner. And it just takes time and it takes work. Um, but the results are amazing for what you can actually accomplish. And uh, so I hope you've learned a lot about the Four Horsemen today. And I look forward to um, speaking to you on the next topic. Have a great day.